Hello, today we're taking a look at spirometry and we're going to explain the physiology behind the spirometry curve. To be able to understand the physiology of the respiration curve, it's important that you understand the basic physiology of respiration. And if you haven't watched the video that I made on that, please do so before continuing with this one. There will be a link in the description for that video. So during inspiration, the lung volume increases uh, and the pressure inside of the lungs. Okay, so now when you have an understanding about how breathing works, we can get into some more specific mechanics that affects the spirometry curve. So, during expiration, we will have different outside pressures that press against the lung, both from the rib cage and also from the abdomen. And in combination with this, we also have the natural pulling effect of the lungs that always kind of pulls itself together. And this, as you know, creates a intraluminal pressure that is illustrated here within the green sphere to be higher than the atmospheric pressure and causing the air, the air to flow out of the bronchi. Now let's take a look at what happens to the air and specifically the pressure once the air travels. W when the air travels through the airways it will be subject to some resistance and to illustrate how this affects the pressure we're going to take a look at how one big pressure affects this first so this big pr th this big resistance will not allow all the air molecules to flow through it and so therefore it's easy to see that the pressure on the other side of the resistance is lower than what it was before. And now when you imagine the airways with a lot more resistance, it's still the same effects that happening. So once the air travels through the, the airways, the pressure drops because it allows less molecules to tra travel through it. And before we can take a look at the actual spirometry curves, it's important that you understand the concept of equal pressure point. And if you haven't watched the video that I made on that, please do so. The link is in the description. S okay, so now that you understand how equal pressure point works, we can take a look at how it affects the airflow during forceful expiration that we use during spirometry. So once we achieve the equal pressure point, it doesn't really matter if we add more force to our expiration because while we increase the intraluminal pressure, we also increase the um, dynamic compression pressure and therefore the flow of air is only dependable on the natural recoil of the lung. Now let's take a look at how all of this works together and how it affects the um, appearance of the spirometry curve. The normal spirometry curve looks like this with flow on the y-axis and volume on the x-axis and that would be volume that has been pushed out of the lungs. So now when the person forcefully exhales the uh, flow of air will increase and while the air is traveling through the bronchi the pressure will drop 
until we reach the point of equal pressure. And now it's not no longer the expiratory muscle strength that affects the airflow and it's now only the stretchiness of the lung and therefore the airflow will decrease because the stretchiness or the recoil of the lung is not as powerful as the expiratory muscles but it's not only this that causes the airflow to decrease it's also the fact that air is breathed out and thereby the pressure the interluminal pressure is lower so the flow will be less. Now let's take a look at an obstructive spirometry. So this is how an obstructive spirometry looks like. And so in our illustration here we will add an obstruction where obviously the resistance is much higher than the other parts of the airway. So this time when the air travels through the airway it will come across this resistance and once it travels through it we know that the pressure drops quite drastically and therefore the equal pressure point is reached much faster than in the normal case. So you can imagine this forceful expiration that suddenly meets like a stop from this dynamic compression and then after this flow kind of drops quite drastically as you can see by the curve but almost the same amount of air will still be exhaled thanks to the recoil effect of the lung but it will just take much longer time and lastly let's take a look at how the restrictive spirometry curve works the restrictive spirometry is quite a lot easier to understand. A restrictive lung disease basically means that we can not breathe in as much air as usual and so we can imagine that the lung is smaller or has less volume and therefore we won't get as far on the x-axis and also we will not be able to get as much flow because the recoil force of the lung is dependent on the volume of the lung it's like a balloon if you blow it up more it will more forcefully um, push out air when you untie the knot That was about it for this video. Hopefully you understand the mechanism behind the spirometry curve a bit better now. And um, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you liked the video and leave a comment if there's anything you're wondering about.